Number 5. Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe Robert Mugabe was a Zimbabwean revolutionary and politician who served as Prime Minister of Zimbabwe from 1980 to 1987 and as president from 1987 to 2017. In fact, Mugabe is a man who needs no introduction. Mugabe was once a lauded figure in his homeland. In fact, he was an international hero. And he was an icon of liberation as he started out as something of a hero who helped free Zimbabwe from colonialism imperialism and white minority rule after he became leader of the zimbabwe african national union zanu he was imprisoned for 10 years from 1964 to 1974 for speaking out against white minority rule in his home country rhodesia and when he was released he went to mozambique to create a rebel force to start the rhodesia bush war that resulted in the death of around 20,000 people. The world cheered when after leading a long guerrilla war, Mugabe led the ZANU FP party to victory at the elections in February 1980 after Rhodesia had won its independence from Britain. Mugabe then became prime minister and renamed the country from Rhodesia to Zimbabwe. In late 1987, the Zimbabwe parliament amended the constitution and declared Mugabe to be executive president. A new position that combined the roles of head of state, head of government and commander-in-chief of the armed forces. This position gave him the power to dissolve parliament, declare martial law and run for an unlimited number of terms. The constitutional amendments also abolished the 20 parliamentary seats reserved for white representatives. In the build-up to the 1990 Zimbabwean general election, Parliament reforms increased the number of seats to 120. Of these, 20 were to be appointed by the President and 10 by the Council of Chiefs. This measure made it more difficult for any opposition to Mugabe to gain a parliamentary majority. During the 1990s, the economy was suffering from inflation, but government officials were increasing their salaries. By the late 1990s, deep cracks had begun to appear in both the system and in Mugabe's political psyche. Patronage, massive corruption, and an increase in reliance on the military saw Mugabe's reputation steadily decline. To retain power, his method became increasingly violent and extrajudicial. From that point on, Mugabe's methods became more questionable. Elections were rigged, the population subject to violence, repression, and a system of political patronage Grew. This created an economic basket case out of once a vibrant and self-sufficient nation. Mugabe has been viewed as being racist towards white people, targeting white citizens in different ways. Mugabe encouraged black Zimbabweans to violently seize white-owned farms. In May 2000, he issued a decree under the Presidential Powers Act which empowered the government to seize farms without providing compensation. In 2001, Mugabe issued a presidential decree permitting the expropriation of vitro all white owned farms in Zimbabwe without compensation. The land seizures were often violent. By 2006, a reported 60 white farmers had been killed, with many of their employees suffering intimidation and torture. Despite growing opposition among the people, increasing in debt and a fall in the standard of living of Zimbabweans. Mugabe was re-elected in 2002, 2008 and 2013 through campaigns dominated by violence and electoral fraud. And in some cases, opposition supporters were killed. Throughout Mugabe's rule, anyone who opposed him was subjected to intimidation, arrest and prosecution, and this included journalists. In 2016, Mugabe said he will keep on ruling until God says come. In November 2017, Mugabe sacked his vice president. This fueled speculation that he wanted to name his wife as successor. As a result, members of his own political party hosted him in a coup, replacing him with his former vice president. Number 4. Hassan Abri of Chad Abri seized power in Chad and ruled from 1982 until he was overthrown in 1990. He took power when he successfully defended Chad from Libya in 1982. Abri's accession to power was aided largely by France and the United States of America who provided training, arms and financing throughout his rule due to his opposition to Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. Abri created a one-party dictatorship notorious for widespread human rights abuses and atrocities. Following his rise to power, he created a secret police force that tortured and killed his opponents. Some methods of torture commonly used by the secret police force included burning the body of detainees with blazing objects, spraying gas into their eyes, ears and nose, 
first swallowing of water and forcing the mouth of detainees around the exhaust pipes of running automobiles. Abu's government also periodically engaged in ethnic cleansing against certain ethnic groups when it was perceived that their leaders posed a threat to his regime. Abu was overthrown in 1990 and he immediately fled to Senegal. He was placed under house arrest in 2005 until his arrest in 2013. He was accused of war crimes and torture during his eight years in power. In 2016, he was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison on charges of rape, sexual slavery, and other really killing of 40,000 people. Abri died in Senegal on the 24th of August 2021, just a week after his 79th birthday. Number 3. Omar al-Bashir of Sudan Omar al-Bashir is one of the most brutal dictators Africans have ever seen and he is more of a recent case of dictatorship. Omar al-Bashir was the leader of Sudan from 1989 to 2019. Al-Bashir rose to power in 1989 when as a brigadier in the Sudanese army, he led a group of military officers in a military coup that ousted the democratically elected government of Prime Minister Sadi Kalmadi. He was elected three times as president in elections that have been under scrutiny for electoral fraud. Al-Bashir is regarded by many as one of the most murderous dictators ever. He became leader of the country before its division into North and South Sudan. As soon as he took power, he dispersed all political parties in the country, disbanded the country's parliament, and shut down all privately owned media outlets. In October 1993, Al-Bashir's powers increased when he appointed himself president of the country. The executive and legislative powers of the council were later given to al-Bashir completely. Al-Bashir's reign was characterized by a civil war in which over 1 million people were killed, with several millions displaced. In the Darfur region, he oversaw a war that resulted in the death of tens of thousands of people. He planned and committed genocide against various ethnic groups, killing tens of thousands of people. Al-Bashir became famous in 2009 when he became the first sitting head of state to be indicted by the International Criminal Court, the ICC, for allegedly directing a campaign of mass killing, rape and pillage against civilians in Darfur. From December 2018 onwards, Al-Bashir faced large-scale protests which demanded for his removal from power. In April 2019, Al-Bashir was overthrown by the Sudanese armed forces after many months of protest and civil uprising. Al-Bashir was immediately placed under house arrest pending the formation of a transitional council. In December 2019, Al-Bashir was convicted for money laundry and corruption and he was sentenced to two years in prison. Al-Bashir's trial regarding the coup that brought him to power started in 2020. Number 2. Mobutu Sese Seko of the Democratic Republic of Congo Mobutu Sese Seko was a Congolese politician and military officer who was leader of the Democratic Republic of Congo from 1965 to 1997. During the Congo crisis in the early to mid-1960s, Mobutu serving as chief of staff of the army and supported by Belgium and the United States, deposed the democratically elected Prime Minister Patrice Lumumba in 1960. Lumumba was killed in 1961 and Mobutu continued to lead the country's armed forces until he took power directly in a second coup in 1965. Mobutu would then rule the Democratic Republic of Congo for 32 years, employing the same oppressive tactics of other dictators before him. Mobutu developed a regime that was intensely autocratic even by African standard of his time. Mobutu led one of the most enduring dictatorships in Africa and amass a personal fortune estimated to be over $5 billion by selling his nation-rich natural resources while the people lived in poverty. Upon taking power, he banned all political parties in the country and declared the equivalent of a state of emergency. In 1967, Mobutu established his own political party and made it the only legally permitted political party in the country. Mobutu presided over a period of widespread human rights violations. Early in his rule, Mobutu consolidated power by publicly executing political rivals, secessionists, coup plotters, and other threats to his rule. In order to set an example, many were hanged before large audiences. Such victims included the former Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Evarist Kimba, who together with three other cabinet members were tried and sent to the gallows in 1966. 
before an audience of 50,000 spectators. In 1968, Lumumba's Minister of Education, Pierre Mulili, was loaned out of exile on the belief that he would receive amnesty. However, he was tortured and killed by Mobutu's forces after he returned to the Democratic Republic of Congo. During his regime, Mobutu amassed a large personal fortune through economic exploitation and corruption, leading some to call his rule a kleptocracy. As early as 1970, it was estimated that Mobutu had stolen 60% of the national budget that year, marking him as one of the most corrupt leaders in Africa and the world. Mobutu was notorious for corruption, nepotism, and the embezzlement of $4 to $15 billion during his rule. He was also known for extravagances, such as shopping trips to Paris via the supersonic Concorde aircraft. Under his rule, the nation also suffered from uncontrolled inflation, a large debt and massive currency devaluations. In 1971, Mobutu changed the Congo's name to Zaire. And in 1972, Mobutu changed his own name. The former Joseph Desire Mobutu became Mobutu Sisi Siko. Mobutu received strong military, diplomatic and economic support from the United States, France and Belgium who believed Mobutu was a strong opponent of communism in Francophone Africa. Close relatives and fellow members of his own tribe were awarded high positions in the military and the government. And Mobutu groomed his eldest son to succeed him as president. However, his son died in 1994. By 1990, economic deterioration and unrest forced Mobutu into coalition with his power opponents. In May 1997, rebel forces led by Lawrence Kabila overran the country and forced Mobutu into exile. Already suffering from advanced postulate cancer, Mobutu died three months later in Morocco. Number 1. Jane Bidel Bokassa of the Central African Republic Bokassa, who was leader of the Central African Republic from 1966 to 1979, ran one of the world's most brutal dictatorships. Bokassa was a colonel and commander-in-chief of the armed forces when he seized power in 1966, toppling his cousin David Dako, who had been president since the country gained independence in 1960. The son of a village chief, Bokassa attended local missionary schools before joining the French army in 1939. Bokassa distinguished himself in the French conflict in Indochina and by 1961, Bokassa had achieved the rank of captain. In 1962, at the request of his cousin, President David Dako, Bokassa left the French armed forces to aid the army of the newly independent Central African Republic. On the 31st of December 1965, Bokassa used his position as commander-in-chief to overthrow his cousin David Dako and declared himself president of the republic on the 1st of January 1966. Bokassa's regime was a reign of terror. As a result, he was known as the Butchawa of Bangui. Bokassa was known for his autocratic and unpredictable policies, and his government was characterized by periodic reshuffles in which the power of the presidency was gradually increased. As soon as he took power, he imposed a number of new rules and regulations. Men and women between the age of 18 to 55 had to prove that they had jobs, or else they would be fined or imprisoned. Begging was banned. Tom Tom playing was allowed only during the nights and the weekends. A morality brigade was formed in the capital to monitor bars and dance halls. Polygamy, dories, and female circumcision were all abolished. In 1969, Bokassa's friend Captain Alexander Banza attempted a coup against Bokassa. However, he was ambushed and taken to Bokassa's house, where Bokassa nearly beat him to death. He was later tried and executed in an open field. In 1972, Bokassa declared himself president for life. During his regime, his political opponents were executed, and the national economy devastated to sustain his extravagant personal lifestyle. In 1976, Bokassa proclaimed himself emperor with the title Emperor Bokassa I. He was crowned a year later in emulation of his hero Napoleon I in a lavish ceremony that cost his country roughly $20 million, about one-third of the country's annual budget. Bokassa then changed the country's name to the Central African Empire. By this time, Bokassa's regime had effectively bankrupted his poor country, and his reign as emperor proved to be short-lived. Throughout Bokassa's regime, suppression of dissidents remained widespread, and torture especially was said to be rampant. Rumors abounded that Bokassa himself occasionally participated in beatings and executions. In January 1979, food riots erupted in the capital of Bangui and Bokassa's forces opened fire on protesters, killing hundreds. In April of that year, Bokassa passed a regulation forcing students to purchase uniforms bearing his image 
only available from a factory owned by one of his wives. In response to this, students began protesting against Bokasa and many students were shot dead by the police during this protest. Bokasa had hundreds of students arrested and thrown in prison where approximately 100 students were beaten to death and Bokasa is alleged to have participated in the massacre. The massacre caused international outrage as Bokasa was condemned by foreign governments and international organizations cut off aid. In September of 1979, while Bokasa was out of the country on a visit to Libya, he was deposed by French paratroopers. His cousin David Dako was reinstalled as president and the country's name was restored as the Central African Republic. In 1980, Bokasa was tried and sentenced to death in absentia. In 1986, Bokasa returned to the Central African Republic and he was immediately arrested and his verdict in absentia was overturned and a new trial was ordered for him. In 1987, Bokasa was found guilty of murder and he was sentenced to death again. Bokasa was also tried for cannibalism, but he was acquitted of the charges of cannibalism, and the death sentence was later committed to life in prison. Bokasa was released in 1993 during a general amnesty and he died in 1996. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos.